praise and worship this afternoon was truly awesome. It's not awesome because we are awesome. It's awesome because our God is awesome. Amen. Amen. And when we praise him, he pours out more of his spirit in us that even takes our praises to somewhere else. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. Thank you for all the wonderful voices, wonderful people who have led us in worship this morning. Amen. I pray that your spirit will rest upon them. Amen. I pray that your spirit will empower them. Amen. I pray that your spirit will do great things in their life. Amen. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we open our Bibles to Matthew 24? Matthew 7, 24 to 27. The book of Matthew 7, I will read 24 to 27. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ says, and I read, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Father, we commit your words to you this morning. Holy Spirit, we ask that you yourself explain your words to us this morning. Amen. Father God, let there be a, an outpouring. Amen. Let there be an outpouring. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit upon us this morning. Amen. And Father, we pray that you will explain and bring these words to manifestation in our life. Amen. Let us from now on be reckoned as the wise and not the foolish. Amen. We bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, this word of Jesus Christ has to be taken extremely seriously. Because Jesus Christ has just given a long sermon which has been called the Beatitudes, and he has laid a lot of groundwork and given a lot of words of wisdom, true words. And then to cap it up, he says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. That whoever hears the sayings of Jesus Christ, the words of Jesus Christ, shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And I want you to understand that the words of Jesus Christ and not just the words he spoke himself in the New Testament. <coughs> they are also everything that was spoken about him. And you need to understand that the whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ says, I am the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Amen. He says, I have not come to destroy the words, the law, but I have come to fulfill the law. So in Jesus Christ, and in everything he said, in everything he did, in everything he asked us to do, he has fulfilled all the, the law. Therefore, when he says, whoever does these words of mine, are 
those who are doing what Jesus Christ has asked us to do. He says, that person shall be reckoned like a wise man. And the reason why that person is wise is because he built his house on the solid rock of the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the only house you can build on earth is your life. Your life is your house. Your life is your house. Your life is what you are going to live in while you are alive. And when you are dead, that house cannot be lived in by anybody else. In fact, you need to understand that your life is yours to live. Nobody, nobody can live your life for you. Amen. Amen. They can help you to build your life. They can give suggestions to you. But ultimately, if you do not build your life on the words of Jesus Christ, he says that you are like a foolish man who built his life or his house on the sand. Why is the word of Jesus Christ built, referred to as a rock and the other things are sand? It's because Jesus Christ and his word is the, word, is the only thing that will stand the test of time. Amen. If you build your life on what the Bible says, and what Jesus Christ has confirmed, that statement will never change. So you are building on a solid foundation that will never be taken away from you. But if you build your life on the words of this earth, you may be surprised that five years later, that principle has been changed. You will find that 20 years later, your children cannot build on what you built on because the law has changed. Circumstances has changed. Even some people might have a piece of land, dead property, physically, that they bought. And in 20 years' time, the government revokes the permit even to your parents and says, that land doesn't belong to you anymore. So you cannot build on it. So what I'm saying to you, church, is that you got to build on the word of God. You cannot build your children cannot build on your life. Say you are a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer. They cannot build on the fact that you are a lawyer. But you can. But when you are dead, it's gone. So the only thing that will stand the test of time is the word of God. So Jesus just says, but whoever hears these words, sayings of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who saw that there was a rock he could build his house on, but chose to build his house on the sand. And lo and behold, as surely as life is real, the winds came, the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat on that house. You need to understand that in this life that you are living, there's something called the rain, there's something called the wind, there are going to be floods that will beat on the house. Whatever you build will be shaken by circumstances of life. Amen. Amen. And when those circumstances of life build or, or, or fall upon anything that you build, it is only those that are built on the solid word of Christ that will remain. Amen. Because the word of God is unshakable, it's unmovable, it's time eternal. It has stood the test of time. So what I'm saying to you, the church, and especially to the young people in the, in the house today, is that you must build your house You must prepare for problems that will no doubt happen in your life. And you are not too young to begin to build your life. To the young people in this house, you are not too young. To 
to the youth in the house, you are not too young. In fact, the word of God makes me to understand that to be called a youth simply means that you are at the time of independent thinking. The time that you can begin to understand the Bible, the time that you can begin to make sense of what is in the word of God, you can be called a youth. Amen. So some of these children who can reason certain Bible passages, who can begin to build their life on the word of God that says you shall not steal, the word of God that says you shall not lie, the word of God that says you shall not give false witness, they are already at the point in their life when they can begin to build. Parents, are you hearing me? And young people, are you hearing me? And especially the youths, are you hearing me? Your children are never too young. They are never too young. Being a child is not an excuse. And for us as older people, we need to move away from being children. I'm telling you that whoever hears the word of God and does not build his life on it is like a child. It's like a child. So being a youth or a child or an adult in things of Christianity is not about your age. It's about how you respond to the word of God. What of God says, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child and I understood things as a child. But when I became a man, or in this case a woman, that is an adult, what God says, I put away all the childish things. Amen. I'm here to declare to you today that whoever does not build his life on the word of God is acting like a child. That means you are not thinking deeply about what you're doing. You are superficial. You are letting the things of the world sway you. They are letting people convince you that this is how you're supposed to build your life on. And when the time comes, when there's a problem, I can assure you that those are the first to run away from you. When there are problems, they are the first people to move away from you. So there's a great need for us to build our life on the word of God. God called a lot of prophets into service when they were young people. Prophet Samuel, the word of God says to us that he was a child. When God called him, he didn't even understand that it was God that was calling him. Amen? Amen. That the prophet Eli had to explain to him that when that word comes again, say, Hear, uh, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. He had to explain to him that yield to that word. So you need to begin to explain to your children, even now. And the word of God says that from the moment Samuel heard the word of God, his life transformed. Let me take you there. First Samuel 3. First Samuel 3. Verse 10. From verse 10. What of God says, Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Some of you, the Lord has been calling you and calling you and calling you and you are not even paying attention. Amen. Some of our young people, the Lord is calling you and calling you and you are paying partial attention to, to the word of God. What of God says, Samuel, Samuel asked at other times and this time, Samuel said, speak for your servant here. Samuel has positioned himself instantly, even a child, into the position of a servant of God. Amen? Amen. You need to explain to your children 
that we are all servants of God. From the moment your child was born, you need to, to, to pray over him that his ears will be open to the word of God. And as they get older, you need to begin to explain to them, hallelujah, Amen. how to yield to the please no movement in the house. You need to begin to yield, as encourage them, show them how to yield to the voice of God. Amen. <laughs> what did Samuel say? Did he say, Lord, your child hears? No. He said, your servant. Instantly, he put himself in that position where God can connect with him. Your servant hears. And what did God say? Listen. God said this. Behold, verse 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something. I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. God is saying something to this young boy that nobody else knew. I pray that God will begin to use our young men and women. Amen. I will connect with them so powerfully amen. that through them, it will shape their community. Amen. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. That through them, God will shape the nation. Amen. I said that through them, God will shape the world. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Through them. And the next thing God said to him was this. Next verse. Verse 12. Let's go to verse 19. Let's jump to 19. So Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. That is amazing. That is amazing. Just the word that he heard. Amen. Just the word that he heard. Just the word. I'm saying to you, church, young people, that when you begin to build your life on the word of Christ, the world will know that you have been established as a servant of God. Amen. Amen. The world will see you rising. Amen. The world will see you performing great things. Amen. The world will see you prospering. The world will see you having A stars all over the place. The world will establish you as a child of God. Amen. Amen. But the word is important. The word is important. What am I saying? I'm saying to you that the words of Jesus Christ Alive. Amen. Amen. Tell your children that these words in the Bible are life. They are life giving, they are life forming, they are life developing, they are life proving words. John 6. Let's go to John 6, verse 63. What does it say? Jesus Christ says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The, the flesh does not give you any profit. 
then goes on to say that the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Amen. The words that Jesus Christ is speaking and confirming in the Bible, when they enter into your spirit, they will connect with your spirit and bring forth life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm declaring to you today that the Holy Spirit is very, very vital in your life. You are not too young to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you as a church that the Holy Spirit is what makes the difference. If there's somebody in church who is fidgeting all the time, who is disturbing what is happening to the Holy Spirit is not working in them. I can tell you that. When you are in church and the Holy Spirit is working in you, every word that is being said will mean double even what the preacher is saying. I'm telling you that. There will be a quickening of your spirit because you'll be saying, Father, Lord, ah, yes, I understand. Even you will understand more than the pastors. Hallelujah. Amen. What the God says, I understand more than my who? My teachers. I understand more than even my teachers. That is what the Spirit does. When you hear the word of God and the Spirit inside you has been activated, your understanding is multiple times. Amen. So I pray, oh God, that the Spirit of God inside us that we have activated in the prayers this morning will remain activated Amen. and will take hold of this word Amen. that is being spoken into their lives. I told you earlier on this morning that my understanding of the pivotal role of the Holy Spirit is so clear now. It is about the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus Christ has given us the spirit. He says that I will give you what? A helper. He is the one that makes sense of what we are doing. The Holy Spirit is what makes sense. The Holy Spirit is the one that will not make you to lash out at somebody when what they are doing is annoying. Because what they are doing will make sense to you. You say that person is, in, is troubled. Amen. You will see their problem and not the situation. It's the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you honestly speaking, if you want love, joy, and peace in your life, if you want the gift of the Holy Spirit to be manifested in your life, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. He will bring it to your understanding. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ says, I will give you the helper. John 14 verse 16. He says, I will give you another helper. That is Father. I pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide in you. Not only that, in verse 26, he says, but the helper, go to John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Jesus Christ says, how many times, he was asked the question, how many times should I forgive my brother? He said, 70 times, 7 times. That will come to your remembrance because the Spirit is inside of you. It will come to your remembrance. When you feel that God has forsaken me, you will say, you will bring to your remembrance that even a father and mother can, for, can forsake their child, but I will never forsake you. You are written in the palm of my hands. It will come to your remembrance at that time. The Holy Spirit. That is life. <laughs> so you need to understand the pivotal role and seek a clear relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. Apostle Paul said this, Romans 8 verse 26. He said that the Spirit will help in our weaknesses. Amen. Amen. When you are weak and don't know what to do or don't know how to pray, don't know that what is the situation you are supposed to commit into prayer and you don't realize that it is not for you to handle, let God take control of it. 
The word of God says it will help you in your weakness. But it will not help you in your strength. Some of us are handling situations in our life as if we can solve them ourselves. But the moment you declare it as a point of weakness, amen, the moment you recognize that, Father God, I am weak in this situation, the Lord will kick in. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says that the Holy Spirit himself will do what? He will intercede for you. Amen. Amen. That Holy Spirit will speak on your behalf. That means Holy Spirit will ask God for you. Holy Spirit will bring the answer for you. You don't have to do anything because you don't know what to do. You are, you are going to be useless at it anyway. But the Holy Spirit will bring intercession into the situation. It's not that you should suddenly go and start speaking in tongues. Do you understand that speaking in tongues is not necessarily giving the Holy Spirit permission to work in your life. It's just letting him and do the matter. And the word of God says it will make intercession in that situation. The way you will know that the Holy Spirit is interceding for me is that you will have the peace in your heart that no matter what happens, let it happen. Amen. Amen. He said, Father God, I give it up to you. And you will see to your pleasant surprise that that outcome will not be what you feared, but will be what God has brought into your life. Amen. Amen. It will be what God has purposed to happen in your life. Let us learn to give it up to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us learn to give it up to the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to close by giving you a story. I preached this word before a long time ago and that story was in the news at that time. I'll give you a story. There was a boy, amen, please pay attention everybody. There was a boy, a teenage boy, who became disabled in a road traffic accident. True story. He, he was with his childhood friend. I can't remember the exact circumstances. But a, a, a car was going to hit his friend, so he pushed his friend out of the way. And in the process of pushing his friend out, he took the brunt of the accident. And he became disabled as a, as a, as a result of that. In the course of time, his friends started seeing him as disabled. Yeah. And they, 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 he, he wasn't cool anymore. And then his closest friend abandoned him for the other people who were normal. And he couldn't handle it. This boy couldn't handle it because he suddenly was no longer cool anymore to his friend. And he committed suicide. He committed suicide. But the question you have to ask yourself is, why did he commit suicide? I don't know the reasons why he did, but one thing I can say to you is that he did not build his life on the word of God. He built his life on relationship with others. He built his life on friendship with others. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's like somebody I, give, I thank God that all our children who did this, the examination passed can you imagine what happens if there's somebody who got a very bad result in the O levels or A levels right and all your friends then move to the next school or to university and they abandon you and they don't see you as their friend anymore because they say well can't really come up with us. I've got new friends. I'm going to this school, and you are stuck to go back to the old school or go to another school where they are only. You know, it can be very difficult. And some people will feel that they've lost all their friendship circle because they have had to stay behind and take a remedial course or not go with everybody that they plan that we are all going to end up in the same university. That can be very difficult for some people to deal with. I'm not saying you necessarily cause people to have to commit suicide, but it can make some kids get depressed. But you have to ask yourself, if that child had built his life on the word of God, that says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He will know that God is the one that you saw me on. Amen. Amen. So you need to teach your children. Can we go to Isaiah 43 verse 2? 
And that's what the three verse two. It says, when you go to the waters, I will be, tell your children, there will be waters for you to go through. Therefore, you need to build your life on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and on his teaching. God said, when you go to the waters, I will be with you. Amen. Amen. And when you go to the rivers, when you go to, they will not overflow you. You will not be tested beyond your ability to cope. And when you walk to the fire, yes, the fire will be fire, but you will not be burned. That means you still have a good future ahead of you. Amen. Amen. And the flame will not scorch you. Amen. The flame will be hot. There will be stuff that you have to handle, but it will not scorch. And I say to anybody who is watching on the on the on the uh, on the net, if your results were not what you expected, I'm telling you that if you trust in God, that says in this time of difficulty I will be with you, then you will find that you will find a way forward. In fact, you might even discover that this time of reflection is what you need to find your true path in life. Some people have done that. I know somebody who is close to me who had to repeat O-levels, the final year of O-levels. Just for confidentiality, I won't say too much, but that person has risen to the top of his profession where he lives right now. Person dropped one year, but that person is at the top of his profession in his country. He is the top man in the profession in his country now. So you need to understand that no matter what the problems are, the word of God says, God will not forget you. Amen. He says, I will not forget you. You are inscribed in the palm of my hand. And your walls are continually before me. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand as a church? I just want to offer some prayers. Let's start. I want us to declare today, is there, is there anybody in the church this morning who has not given their life to Christ? Anybody? Raise up your hand. If you've never given your life to Christ, If you've never given your life to Christ, raise up your hand and I will pray with you. Thank God that everyone has given their life to Christ. Amen. I want you to say, Jesus Christ, you are my firm foundation. Let's begin to pray. Father, it's a word of a song, but it's also in the Bible. Jesus Christ, you are my foundation. From now on, I will build my life on your rock. And your rock is your word. You have offered your words to me as a rock. And I stand on your word today. And I build my life on your rock. Thank you, Father. Lord, you are my solid foundation. Father God, you are my solid foundation. I build my life on you. I build my life on your solid rock. Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you praise. I bless you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Second prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I put my hope in your word. Now, you have declared you put your hope in his word. Now, say to the Lord, Father, reveal your word to me. That I can have more solid hope in you. I don't just want it to be an empty hope that I just trust in your word. Father, explain, reveal your word, reveal your word I can hold on to in Jesus' name. As you have prayed it, the Lord will bring his word into your remembrance. Amen. That every time you need something to hold on, instantly the word will come to you. Amen. The Lord will make it a joy for you to even go into his word. 
I declare today that the Lord will bring his word into full manifestation in your life. His word will be a source of joy and pleasure to you. That when you open the Bible, his word will be real because they are real. But your Holy Spirit will partner with you and bring the world into reality. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the entrance of your word. What our God says, when your word enters, it makes even the simple to have understanding. It makes those who are simple to be wise. Say, Father God, I will not be wise in my own eyes, but I trust in your word. Final prayer. Declare it before the Lord. Father God, I will not be wise in my eyes, in my own eyes, but I trust in your word. From now on, I will trust in your word. From now on, I will build my life on your word. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word that you have revealed this to us this morning. Lord, thank you for the prayers that you have prayed. Thank you for your words that has come this morning. I pray, O oh God, that even today as we meditate on your words, Father, bring the reality of the power of your words into our life. But I pray that in the next one week, in this house, let there be testimony from those who are standing on your word. So that it becomes a testimony and a light unto others. Thank you, mighty God. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Give the Lord a bigger round of applause. Thank you. You can turn on the live stream now. God bless you.